You're now listening to the Zod and Drea podcast. All right, all right, all right. Hey, everybody. So welcome back to the Zod and Drea podcast. And believe it or not, this is the last episode of season two. Can you believe it? No, I really can't. Can you believe it? No. Actually, this just dawned on me uh, not too long ago. <laughs> you reminded me of the new season coming up. I mean, it's... I just can't believe it's already like, been a year. It just slipped up on... I mean, it just crept up on us. And, you know, sure enough, here we are. We're going to be doing season three. So we have a total of two seasons that have happened. I mean... Congratulations. Congratulations to us. So we're going to make sure that next uh, episode will be the episode, episode number 117 will be the official uh, season three episode. Yes, we just keep the numbers going on, even though, you know, we're not going to do season three, episode one. It's season three, episode 117. <laughs> not be like a Netflix series, right? <laughs> no. So that's just how it is. We like, we like the high numbers, you know? I don't, I don't want to be like season three, episode one. It's like, ah, we're already back down. Big crowd numbers. <laughs> you know? That's it. That's it. So we're just going to keep on growing. Um. So everything has been good this weekend. I don't know if you guys got to go to the Capitol in Arizona. Plus, it was going on all over the place, mm-hmm. which was the um, rallies and Rally marches. Rally for keeping our families together. Yeah, so that's what was going on there, keeping the families together. If you don't know, the uh, administration had been separating children from families at the border at a zero-tolerance policy. So anybody who says, oh, you know, Obama did this, or you know, it's not true. There was always... Um, uh, immigration, you know, uh, consequences, you know, crossing over where you held, were detained. But the Obama administration did not separate families unless they had to, and they did it extremely rarely. But the families were always put back together, I think, within a couple of days. It was an executive order that was done in this administration to separate families. And that's the zero tolerance policy. So, um, you know, we've discussed a little bit about this, but I will probably discuss it a little bit more if they wind up making it a bigger issue, which I'm sure it will be. But Let's get into what's going to be happening on this podcast. So, um, you know, on the uh, entertainment front, um, what's what's closing? What is closing is Toys R Us. And we're going to talk about how that is like a big loss, I think. So and come up with some of our memories about Toys R Us and, and the of, whole toy industry. And of course, the relationships is going to wind up being season three of the Zydendria podcast, which we're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, because that's going to wind up being something really huge, and it's going to be our introduction. So we're going to take photos, we're going to be having new podcasts and everything else. So what is the main topic on this one? Are the Democrats officially out of touch? So we're going to be uh, harsh and critical of the Democratic Party, um, despite how we vote. Um, you know, we need to move forward. So uh, let's get in on this. Let's talk about. Um, let's talk about. Let's talk about Toys R Us. Let's talk about that. Get that I don't want to grow up. See, it was funny. Like I like <laughs> there was a meme. There was a meme I said. And it was like Jeffrey, Jeffrey, like cursing everyone out. Like, oh, now you, now you guys feel me. You haven't, sh- you <laughs> haven't shopped here too. in years, and now you're feeling this pain. You know, it's like hey, 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 fuck out of here. You know, uh, and I don't blame Jeffrey. It's true. I mean, what was the reason why you and your family didn't shop on Toys R Us? Why we didn't? Yep. You know, it was after I grew up that I stopped shopping at Toys R Us. So you actually did. Um, as a kid, yeah, we shopped at Toys R Us because, one, that was the really only place growing up that had all the toys, that had everything you ever wanted, and that was the place to go. And even for, like, I remember getting birthday supplies at Toys R Us, too, like, you know, games you could have for, to- you know, decorations. Like, it was everything. Then, slowly but surely, things started to uh, change at Toys R Us because of Walmart. Yeah, there were bigger stores that were going on. See, here, here's me. You, your family was obviously even more well-to-do than we were because we were grew up straight up middle class in Morris Plains, New Jersey, and it was too expensive. Anybody feeling me out there? Mm-hmm. It was too expensive at Toys R Us. Toys R Us cost a lot of money. So back in the days where we're from, I mean, you guys can try to look this up. Anybody who's listening from uh, New Jersey at any point remembers two guys. There was two guys... And we also then after that had um, Bradley's, I believe it was br- either Bradley's and then Caldor or Caldor mm-hmm. and Bradley's. I'm trying to remember what it was. Um, and then it turned to a Coles or something like that. But it was like uh, Bradley's. and Co- So in other words, these bigger stores that were local would come in. And Toys R Us was just so expensive. For the same thing that you could drive all the way over in Route 10 or whatever and go to Toys R Us and get, 
you can get a lot cheaper at Bradley's or Caldor, two guys. So that's See, what my Phoenix, parents did. See, in Phoenix, we didn't have very – we were limited. We didn't have any other options, really, of a big place where you could go get toys. You really didn't. So – Toy, well, we couldn't compare. Well, in the 70s, we had the internet, too. So we would always go on the Amazon.com and get a lot Did of things. Did you just say the 70s? Yeah. Shut up. <laughs> I'm like, what? And you're sitting there looking at me like, eh. I was like, well, I'm going to let you finish this, whatever this is. <laughs> we were ahead of the game. <laughs> you were the Amazon before they were Amazon. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you. So it was crazy. It was crazy. Um, I think that Toys R Us was its own downfall in the same sense that Blockbuster was. Oh, yeah. That they didn't keep up with the times that were happening. And mm-hmm. they tried to, you know, I think at the end they tried to offer, like, coupons. It's like, where was that way before? You know, you were really eating off of people and being extremely expensive when you knew these cheaper options, such as the Internet was coming in, such as Walmart, such as Target, such as some of these other mom and pop shops were like, mm-hmm. yo, we got something similar. You know, Toys R Us, I mean, I'm surprised in New York. I think FAO Schwartz is still over at that location in, <laughs> over near uh, Central Park. But Toys R Us, which was huge. Anybody who ever visited um, Times Square, you know what I'm talking about for, God, it had to have been there for like maybe over 10 years, probably even longer than that. Um, but Toys R Us was a staple in Times Square. It had a Ferris wheel in it. It was mm-hmm. huge. When they shut down, that's what hit me. And that was a few years ago. That's when I was like, uh-oh. No, what I notice <laughs> is when I got older Uh-oh. and it's like kids weren't going there so much anymore. Pa- I'm mean, not kids. Parents were parents were fighting over what you could get at the Walmart, what you could get at the Target then because then they were cheaper and they were more readily available. They had a lot more supplies of it. But I, as a kid, yeah, getting that Toys R Us catalog was so cool because you could be able to circle some of the stuff you wanted. And then even before the catalog, it was even advertisements in the newspaper like ahead of time. They were great at marketing. They were really great at using that type of marketing tool and uh, to get kids excited, to put the pressure on the parents to get that specific doll, to get that specific Lego, to get that specific, uh, uh, like, what was it? Oh, God, a lot of my cousins would get this, and I would love it so Water much. Says what? Uh, no, a lot of the uh, uh, Star Wars figures, like the big Millennial Falcon. I remember seeing that over at Toys R Us. It was so cool. <laughs> Millennia, did I say yeah, it right? Yeah, you said millennium. millennial falcon. That, <laughs> that would be in the last three years. No, mille- millennium. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh-huh. And I wish I had it. <laughs> tauntauns. That's what I remember wanting so bad was the big toy tauntaun. Well, right now, Jeffrey got all the tauntauns. He's out in the street. So if you see Jeffrey on uh, the corner of Route 10 and 7th Ave, please give him a dollar because he is out of work. <laughs> Either that or an application. <laughs> He'll go work for Amazon. That's it, yeah. <laughs> if he's smart, he will submit that application. Sorry, Toys R Us. It was a good run. Rip. And, uh, but, you know, it is what it is. So uh, let's move on to what we are, what we want to talk about. So season three of the Zod and Drea podcast is coming out, which is crazy because, I mean, it also shows the length of our relationship. Um, but, like, this is one thing that we did. It was just conversations that we started, that we had, that we felt that were really important, um, but also, I guess, uh, interesting enough that we would feel that we could broadcast it and maybe somebody's going to have an opinion about it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really cool. I think that's really cool that we have a format that we can do that. And every single weekend, there are only probably like maybe three or four times where we put on um, repeat shows, I think. Yeah, because we we, we just couldn't handle. Yeah, because we were doing something else. We're Mm -hmm. like, oh my God, we can't repeat. I mean, we we recorded one of our episodes waiting for the plane because our plane was late. You remember? In in the airport. Mm -hmm. Um, So And at so many like tiny hotels while we were traveling. (laughs) Yes, in in Virginia Beach. You Mm -hmm. remember that one? During the the hurricane. During the hurricane. So it's like there's a lot of things that went on with this. And it's not just a little podcast, but we love having the conversations with people afterwards. We're like, oh, you know, I heard your podcast. No, 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 no. Um, you know, make sure you also go online and have those discussions because we like to have them forward facing. But we'll, um, also go into the Zadandrea think tank group if you think that you want to throw in some, uh, bounce some ideas off of some really intellectual people with um, all different types of personalities and also political, um, I guess, ideals. Social views, too. You know, mm-hmm. uh, social views, everything. So to be able to do season three now, that is July in 2018, for something that we started in. God, July of 2016, I believe, right? Wow. Like 2016 yeah. to 2017, 17 to 18, and now mm-hmm. 18, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is what we've done. We've had so many interviews with people, so many events that we've attended, people that have come onto the couch and had their discussions there. 
Like, this is really a great calling and a great opportunity for us, and we just love doing it. I don't know how long it's going to keep going, but I'm not slowing down anytime soon. No. I don't know about you. No, in fact, it's now I think for this next season, it's now the challenge of what can we add? What can we do to even increase more and add to what we have made and maybe switch things up a little bit? Don't know. Maybe we um, do some really creative things. But again, it's that challenge of what else can we do? How how else can we expand this opportunity that we have to share with you and to talk with you? Yeah, so, I mean, we got to make sure we get uh, – one thing I need to do is make sure I get the advertisements out because I'm sure that people want to um, be able to advertise, mm -hmm. and I still haven't put that on the website. I've been meaning to do that for, like, two years. That's my look, bad. Look, I, we, I, we got kind of busy. <laughs> I designed, like, the whole site, and it's like, advertising? Eh, eh, yeah, you know, the, eh. money, the money part. Eh. But, I mean, in the meantime, you can always go to patreon.com slash Zodandrea and be able to support us there. Um, that's always a great way to be able to keep us going, keep the lights on, and um, you know allow us to do what we do because um, we'd love to have way more guests on here. And in this political season, it's a lot of fun. So you just never know who's going to wind up being on our couch and yeah. having those discussions. Exactly. For uh, especially in Arizona, November is going to be a very, very crazy deadline time frame for everybody. So starting this month, you. Who knows who we'll have on the couch? Who knows where we'll go to to interview people that are trying to make a difference in this state? And that's what, again, something, again, why we're, what we're passionate about. Yeah, so we're very passionate about that. I mean, we're going to wind up talking about some of the voter movements. I mean, shoot, we should discuss some um, our own nonprofit. Um, but, you know, we're making moves out here in Arizona, and there are people that we want to visit. Uh, of course, like one of my favorites, I think, was the road trip. I love the road trip. I thought that was one of the best things that we had done was document our road trip. Which um, one? You and I only went on, on one. Well, we did like one and a half with the camping trip. And yeah, the yeah. Road trip. The, main, the main road trip the to California. Trip. Yeah, mm -hmm. I did the other road trip uh, with my cousin across the country. But, um, you know, there's a lot of places to visit, a lot of things to do. And, you know, if we wind up getting out of the country, you're going to definitely hear about it, see about it, love it, and talk about it. You'll be there it. with us. And, um, you know, we're going to hope that no matter what, you always support us in everything that we do because it's really important. And without you, there's no Zydendrea. Right. So, um, I mean, we'll always exist. But, you know, from the March for Black Women to the Mark Robert Gordon interviews to... Immigration um, rallies. You talking to Dolores Huerta mm -hmm. that time after her um, after her uh, documentary. I mean, we have a lot of videos out there. So if you haven't done it, make sure you go to Zodandrea.com. Click on videos to see all the videos, but also click on podcasts because we don't just have only just the 15 that are there that you, limit, that you hear on iTunes and some of these other places. They're actually every single one of them is listed on our website and you can listen to all 116. That's a lot to listen to. It's a lot, but they're all there. All different things. You can always comment on each one of them. And every comment on the website will reflect onto the Facebook page. So yeah. make sure you check us out. All right? What's up, everybody? I'm Zod. And I'm Drea. And we want you to check out the Zod and Drea podcast every Tuesday. Where can everybody find us at? Hmm. You can always check us out on www.zodandrea.com. Where else? You can always check us out also on Facebook at Zod Andrea. Instagram? Zod and Drea. Snapchat. Zod and Drea. YouTube. Zod and Drea. I see a pattern. I see a pattern. <laughs> so if you haven't caught that, catch us at Zod and Drea on all the social networks. But also make sure you subscribe to the Zod and Drea podcast. Where? At ZodandDrea.com. And also on YouTube and iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher and iHeartRadio, we're coming for you. Let us know what you think, and if you want to be a guest, reach out to us. And put all of your input into whatever our topics are for the week. So we hope to check you out and see you there. Bye! Okay, we're back! All right, we're back, um, of course. We're going to be discussing, um, are Democrats officially out of touch? So that's going to be this topic of this uh, podcast here. So anybody who's watching, make sure you check us out, zodandrea.com. And um, listen to it on iTunes and everywhere else uh, that we're, we have available online. So, are the Democrats officially out of touch? What do you say? Yes. I do too. I say definitely yes. And you really started, I really started to notice a big shift uh, during, it was beginning of last week with Maxine Waters. Yeah. You want to talk a little bit about what happened there? So, of course, Maxine, uh, God, it, really you have to go back to the Trump administration and um, all the lies that Sarah Sanders, Huckabee, Huckabee Sanders um, spouts from the podium uh, to the press 
Like she she lies. She lies for the president and the people. The press is there to double check on what you say, which is what they've always. That's what what their the job press is. is supposed to do. Double check on everything. Um, but they lie to us. So she and anybody in this administration who tried to, I guess, uh, lie to the public, they were caught out there when Maxine Waters said, you know what? You don't lay off of these people. You make sure that they're kicked out of restaurants. Do whatever you can. In other words, she's telling them civil disobedience in order for people to get into their faces because the American people demand and deserve the truth. So as a result of that, you would think that Democrats were sick of going low. I mean, you know, sick of going high, I should say. Um, because the Republicans are going low, you know, sorry, Michelle Obama, but people want to fight back on this. Mm -hmm. You know, they're a little tired of it and they want to push back. And I don't think she even predicted how low they would go. No. So she didn't know how low they would go. Well, they've been low for a long time. No offense to the Republicans, but you have. And in this administration, they're as low as they can go. I mean, they're just absolutely dirty and filthy. So... The Democrats, who were always trying to take the high road, trying to be the nice guy, oh, don't do all this, um, they railed against, and some of the old guard railed against, um, like Chuck Schumer and mm -hmm. Nancy Pelosi railed against um, uh, Maxine Waters, and they were in the wrong because, number one, they don't know what it's like to be a black woman, much less a black person, so they were using their white privilege, like, oh, you know what, let's be civil, and you shouldn't be doing that, don't do that to Wagging people. Wagging their fingers. Wagging their fingers, mm -hmm. and it's like, you know what? As, a peop as people of color in this country who have been treated so badly for centuries, to almost tell us, you know what, you shouldn't be this way, you shouldn't feel this way or act, like this is the same type of people where, you know, where they would go into the Woolworths and have food dumped on them during segregated mm -hmm. America and mm -hmm. they'd be like, well, you know what, they, that's what... They we need people who are going to be like, you know what? I understand where you're coming from, and you're right. We should not take this. You know, who, who are those uh, – who was it, Twisted Sister? Oh, we're not going to take it? <laughs> we're not going to take it anymore. I mean, right. that song is absolutely right, and it should be the mantra. We're not going to take it anymore. Like, we're not going to sit there and take your crap. Right. The, the, the heroes that um, – and the idols that the Democratic Party always lean on to uh, with uh, 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 Martin Luther King uh, Jr. and uh, Cesar Chavez – it was civil disobedience that brought them to where they had to make change happen. Like, they had to make things happen. And where people were uncomfortable, where people told them to their face, too, no, you shouldn't do this. How dare you want to uh, be unhappy with what, what we've given you here in this country? How dare you want to have better health care? How dare you want to be treated equally? How dare you? Well, no. Yeah, they stood up and they made it very uncomfortable for people. And that's how you get things done. And they like to lean on those uh, heroes, on the civil rights heroes. Oh, you know, do it like King. The thing is, you don't know. 1963, Dr. King, the um, I Have a Dream King is what they're like. Oh, try and use him as an example. But they don't realize the 1968 Dr. King was tired of that crap. Mm -hmm. He was getting way more political, way more militant, and way more radical in his beliefs because he figured that – and his letter, letter in the Birmingham, Birmingham jail was great where he said the threat wasn't the Ku Klux Klaner. It was the white moderate. And that is who is messing things up. And that is where the David Axelrods, where the Nancy Pelosi's, the Chuck Schumer's, and some of these other people who are asking for civility, you know, in a time when you're not supposed to be civil. You're supposed to get out there. You're supposed to fight back. And if a bully is hitting me in the face, I'm not going to say, hey, you know what? Why don't we just have a good discussion about this, buddy? Because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, your punch is really hurt. It's like, no, you're going to fight back. So the Democrats are the people that we have to worry about right now. Um, the old guard, because right now in Senate and, you know, in, in Congress, they are old. They're old. The Dems are old. Oh, yeah, they are. They are. What, at, what you said, average age, I think you found, was like uh, late 60s, it's early like 70s. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're, they're old. So make sure you check this out on our podcast for everybody watching. And um, so just to continue on, uh, we want to make sure that people know that the Democrats have also not backed a lot of candidates that are running. And there are a lot of candidates running on progressive, really progressive um, platforms, issues. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, on issues based. It's like, look, we're sick of the old guard sitting there dancing or getting reelected all the time, all the time, sitting on things like um, free education, something yep. as simple as free education. Mm -hmm. 
why does why do we have to be such a capitalist society that education for everybody is not available? Do you understand that if you invest in your society, that you will reap the rewards as a society back? Why should my zip code dictate my health, my longevity on this planet, and my education? Why does that have to happen? It doesn't make any sense. Mm -mm. So, of course, let's discuss... Let's discuss... Um, the Bronx, New York. My girl. Yeah, girl. So you love her. <laughs> I love her so much. Alejandria Ocasio Cortez. She kicked major booty last Tuesday. How? Was it Tuesday? Yeah, it was Tuesday. Yeah, yeah, it was Tuesday. It was Tuesday. Um, where she was, um, and she claimed to be the party of the, please tell me if I get this correctly. It is the... Democrat social Democratic Socialist Party, where they um, have their beliefs and what they stand for, that they believe that both the economy and society should be run democratically to meet human needs, not to make profit for a few. And who she was running against in the primary in her district was the combination of the Queens and the Bronx, was a what a twenty jo year? Jo yeah, jo well, I don't know, tell her, but it was Joseph. Was it twenty years? Like 10, yeah, 10, 12, no, something about like twenty that. years. Uh, Joseph Crowley. And this was uh, somebody that the Democratic Party was actually looking at. He would replace Pelosi down the road, like really close to re replacing the, uh, Pelosi and being that next lead in the House, right? Well, he ended up losing. Uh, and it seems like there's just this reaction within the party of dismissing her win. She was true grassroots where she went door to door knocked on doors, did not take any corporate dollars at all for her campaign, and uh, really stood upon the values of what the uh, Democratic Socialist Party is. As one is she stood up against saying, I should be abolished, free health care for all, free education for all. Um, and I think I'm missing something, too. No, you're missing a lot. But, yeah, uh, yeah. but, but they're very, um, very progressive. It's yeah. very progressive, something that in a capitalist society that they don't – like, and basically, in this society, there's there's got to be a rich and a poor. Right, right. You know, there's got to be a rich and a poor. There's got to be somebody. That's how capitalism who, works. Yeah, who who is at the top, and somebody has to get paid no matter what. I mean, please, they're even separating children and getting paid off of it. So, you know, there's always got to be in a capitalist society where nobody. And we were having a discussion with some Trumpers, some MAGA people, um, over the weekend. Who, I mean, it was weird how. They didn't support free education. Like I, I just don't understand people who don't support free education. It doesn't make sense to me. Um, so as you know, somebody who's way more progressive, that's where you want to go. For people who want to be regressive, it's like, no, you know what? We should have privatization of schools and let them compete. It's like there's always going to be a top and a bottom, regardless. Regardless, there will always be then at that point a rich and then a poor. The, the middle class will completely shrink to nothing. Dems, Democrats, if you're going to wind up standing on issues, you're going to have to be vocal about it and stop being wussies, which is what is always happening. The new guard wants to make sure that they take everyone by the balls and just moves forward. They're younger, they're brash, and they don't play by the same rules as these older guards do. Correct. Correct. You know, they don't have those invested interests already. They don't have a lot of skeletons in their closet either to hide as well. Mm -hmm. So they have they're putting everything at risk and are just standing on what they believe and what they see is 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 for them going to be the right way for this country to move forward. Because so far what we've seen is that it's it's really it's like you said it's regressing. It's regressing. I mean, I don't understand why. Well, that's that's the whole make America great again. Mm -hmm. um, but we allow them to do that because that's what they are. The Republicans haven't really changed that format, really. And they've go the whole country has gone more right, regardless. Mm -hmm. But the the um the Republicans have gone extremely right. So what somebody is saying, you know, hey, free college and health care for everybody, that shouldn't be a leftist. Oh, that's an extreme left idea. It's like you're going to get sick at some time in the future. You know, you're going to need health care, and you probably won't have because you're going to be either rich or you're going to be poor, and you're going to have to need somebody, some, some sort of help to pay it mm -hmm. at some point. You know, a heart surgery, I think, what, a new heart is like 400 something thousand dollars 
So, you know, you finally get on the list, you get a heart. Now you are like 500,000 in, in the hole. Now you're going to have stress and stress <laughs> on your new heart because you need to find a way to pay for this. Like, it makes no sense. Like, it makes no sense. And the Dems aren't there. So it's like they they wind up, to me, they are out of touch. The Dems are out of touch. They they don't embrace the new ideas. Nancy Pelosi, um, Chuck Schumer, you know, thanks for all the stuff you've done. But if you cannot open your eyes to, you know, even, even the new guy who got in, Tom Perez, you know, we met him. Nice guy. Mm-hmm, nice guy. Um, but if you can't get in and allow the youth you know, it energized the youth enough to where it's like, you know what? You guys are the future, you know, and allowing these old people to dictate to the youth what they're going to be doing for the next who knows how many years. It's ridiculous. And also not just the youth, the people of color. Oh, definitely the people of color. I mean, get behind and support Maxine. Why are you afraid? Why are you afraid to? And, and this is she is a senior in the. In the uh, Democrats, and yet she has these very aggressive and very um, proactive, you know, uh, things that she wants to do uh, with the party. And, you know, you just shouldn't take somebody who's a senior statesman and just throw them off to the side in order to appease. Because to me, they're order- they want to appease to the Republicans, mm-hmm. you know, or to the independents. Independent and voters to lean towards them. To lean towards them. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you know what? Sometimes you got to just be balls out. You don't, you can't, it's not that you can't count on or depend on the uh on that because obviously without the independence you're not going to win but you've got to take a stance on something as well Mm -hmm. and if you don't take a stance on something the the republicans they took a stance they the republicans backed a pedophile they backed a freaking and why because he was anti-abortion a ku klux klan member up in where where white supremacist i'm sorry in, Mm -hmm. in illinois that guy won they don't care and, you know, the Dems are busy, like, oh, you know what, we got to take the high road. And, like, that's, no, but we take the high road when everybody is on that moral ground. But when someone goes so low and they're like, you know, you guys suck and I'm going to smack the hell out of you, you don't sit there and ask, well, you know, uh, can I have another one? But, you know, this time could you just hit me a little lighter? Mm-hmm. And that's what the Dems are doing. They're out of touch and they, they will probably wind up losing um, against Trump because Trump's base is so strong, even though it's only a... And it's only like it's like a small part of the country, but the fact is they go so hard for him because they're so brainwashed and they're in a cult that they will just do anything in order to keep America as white as possible. And you can say what you want about me, but that's what it is. Because as soon as white people are finding out that they are the major, the minority, that they are becoming the minority, then all of a sudden they're going to be losing the power that they have had ever since the friggin' Mayflower landed and slaughtered all the Native Americans and enslaved the Africans. And kept moving on up. So now those days are ending. And with these social Democrats, it's scaring the crap out of them. But unfortunately for Democrats, it's scaring them too. Which makes you wonder, the white Democrats, just like King said, it's the white moderate that you have to look out for. Exactly. Those are the ones that are scarier. So what do we do about this? No, the only thing you can do, I mean, make sure you are registering voter, but make sure people have the right ideas. It's like the old guard is, is going to be leaving soon. There are new people on the ballot right now. So you're going to have to look into their platforms. Young people. In Arizona, there's a lot of young Democrats running. Think Mm -hmm. about it. They are young. A variety, too. Variety. Mm -hmm. The Dems that they have here in AZ running. I mean, we are talking about agnostic, um, atheist, Christian, Jew, Muslim. um, Like, they are all – they are – all out there, black, white, and a lot of uh, Latinas, a lot and of lot females, of and a lot of females. Like you wouldn't believe what they look. They are extremely much what the country is, which is a melting pot. It is not all hillbillies and you know white supremacists. It's just not. What worked in the past is not going to work moving forward. No, it's, it's not. Not. Nope. And so, the, and the Dems better get on board with that. You better get on board. And we're talking about the same DCCC, um, and also the Democratic Party. They're both not on board, even here in Arizona. Mm -hmm. Look what's already happening to our Supreme Court, okay? We don't have any more time. We just don't have time. Yep. And that's it. And that's going to last about 40 years. So thank you for not voting. So anyway, that's it. That's it for this podcast. Make sure you check us out. And uh, we're also on, um, God, we're on everywhere on uh, Radio (laughs) Public. Um, (laughs) Yeah, we are. We're we're like everywhere. So we keep growing. And also IGTV, right? Uh, yeah, we're going to be doing Instagram TV, so make sure you check it out. Um, when I said that and I stopped it in the middle of the um, broadcast because I stopped that, we want people to make sure they check us out. So we'll record a few of our uh, podcasts like that so that you can check it out. So season three is going to be awesome. 
Tell us your thoughts about uh, Toys R Us too. I don't know why I just find it so interesting about yeah. like it's like it's it's just a different way now of how kids are entertained. So yeah. I, so I, I make sure go on Facebook, Instagram, everywhere you can find us um, at Zod Andrea. Give us uh, your thoughts. Um, you know, just we want to know what you're, what's up with you. Is also make sure you go on Facebook onto our group, the Zod Andrea Think Tank. So we want to hear from you. We want to know what you think about uh, season three, which is coming up, and any ideas you have, please let us Unite know. Unite families. That's it.